Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. At the time of me making this video, this week Niantic dropped a pretty big update specifically for PvP, and that is change the mechanic in terms of how fast moves and charge moves interact with each other. In the previous iterations of PvP for at least a couple months, probably over a year or so, it's been a little inconsistent in terms of when you throw a charge move, if your opponent is able to get a fast move through or not. And so some players will say, if you get a fast move through, then it counts as a sneak, quote unquote. And if you prevent them from getting a fast move through, you call it a deny. Original intended mechanic, to my knowledge, is that when you throw a move, your opponent should always get a fast move through. Because every input in PvP costs a turn. So swapping in a Pokemon costs one turn, using a charge move costs one turn, and then you have fast moves that vary from one turn all the way to five turns. But essentially what's been happening that's been inconsistent is that sometimes players will throw a charge move and prevent their opponents from getting any fast moves through. And that's pretty big because you get to essentially use your one turn, which is throwing that charge move for free. Your opponent gets nothing out of it. If this is a one turn fast move like Dragon Breath or Lock On, that's a very different thing. But if it's something like a Confusion or Incinerate, which is a four turn move or five turn move, or even like a Shadow Call, which is a two turn move, it can make a pretty big difference because you typically generate a lot more energy with those moves and do a lot more damage. I'm not really gonna get into all that because we have a fix now. And as of me making this video right now, whenever you throw a charge move, your opponent is guaranteed to get a fast move through. So what we used to call a sneak is essentially just a common mechanic and honestly the intended mechanic. So I think calling it a sneak probably wasn't the best name for it because it implies that it's something that happened that wasn't supposed to happen. It actually was what was supposed to happen and now it's happening every time. Now why I'm giving you all this context is because this actually makes a huge role in terms of how you move forward and how you play the game. When you throw your charge moves now matter more than ever before. Because before, it was a little inconsistent on what would happen depending on when you threw your charge moves. Right now though, you know exactly what will happen from your opponent's side and from your side. So if you optimize when you throw your charge moves, it makes a huge difference for the entire outcome of the match. You prevent your opponents from gaining significant advantage over you by getting extra turns when you throw charge moves. And optimized charge move timing will honestly win you a lot more games in the long run. I know in the past, some content creators may have covered this. Walrus is an example that comes to mind, and I'll link his video down below. He also used the graphic I'll be using from Ghost Stadium, so shout out to both Walrus and Ghost Stadium for their previous work on this. And if you're unsure about how many turns a specific fast move is, I definitely recommend you checking out PE Poke. Great resource in general, but also breaks down the various durations of all the fast moves. Before we get into the rest of the footage, a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons who've been supporting my content creation. If you would also like to have early access to my strategies and lineups, or see behind the scenes footage of my battles, feel free to sign up in the link down below. In this first matchup, I'm going to showcase an Umbreon Mirror, and uh, they're both running Snarl, and we're both going to throw Last Resort. Now, here's the main reason behind this, is to showcase that well, the Oak mechanics of potentially sneaking or denying is pretty much gone. Uh, how this should play out is we're both throwing Last Resort right on time, so this should be a complete CMP. And you know when it's charge move priority, when you tie on your charge moves, uh, when you don't see any possible fast moves coming through, right? And so in that situation, you don't see any, I throw right away. There's no other actions that could be done during that time period. Now for this next one, I'm gonna purposely choose not to throw my last resort. And now you see I get a snarl right when uh, my opponent is throwing the last resort. Now this is important to know because essentially it takes one turn to throw the charge move and because of that, I can only throw a three turn move. So I end up getting a three turns on that one uh, turn charge move. But on the flip side, you see that when I throw the last resort, my opponent also gets to throw their snarl, right? Because it takes me one turn to throw it and it wasn't CMP. Now we're both clicking on it right when we have it and this should be CMP. And as you can see here, we end up CMP again. So th what this means is that in a mirror matchup, there's really no purpose behind not throwing your charge move unless you're trying to hold it for a potential catch or anything like that. In a situation where the fast moves are enough damage to potentially KO the opposing Pokemon, that may be a situation where you don't want to throw any charge moves. In this next matchup where I'm going to showcase the importance of fast move, uh, and the importance of charge move optimization uh in a matchup where it's uneven. So 
Um, I'm counting my opponent's incinerates here, and I'm trying to time my Fury Cutters, which is a one-turn move, uh, as best as possible to, to throw my charge moves uh, against a five-turn move Town Flame. So you'll see here, for the most part, I go for the most optimized timing here. Uh, it's possible that I might throw uh, one less Fury Cutter, right? But for the most part, I don't let them get any incinerates through while throwing, right? So what that means is I'm not letting them throw a full incinerate when it, when I'm spending my turn to throw the charge move. So here's the thing. If I throw my charge move and it costs, and they only have incinerate as a fast move, if they're ready for their next incinerate, then they get free four turns, right? Because they get, you know, it's a five turn move. So I'm spending a turn. So there has to be one turn on their end too, but they get four turns of energy, uh, of fast move, right, advantage. And that really adds up. So I'm counting the sin rates here, and you can see that we're on number six, we're shielding everything, they're fully charging every time. And this is not a matchup where Glissor actually uh, wins in the two shields, but I just wanna show you the difference of when the timing is optimal versus the timing is not, right? So you already see right here, and I'll, I'll show you exactly how to time it a little better, but I just want to emphasize the difference here. So as you can see here, able to get off, I believe, three uh, Night Slashes, I think. So um, what, two goes shielded, right? Now in the second example here, I'm purposely going to time it so that they get more incinerates through, right? So it's eight incinerates before they had three flame charges. So... Um, that will still be the same, but you can see right there, right when I threw that move, another incinerate came through, right? You can see the animation of the previous one when I'm throwing it, and then one right when I'm throwing it. And so that's really bad when you see it. I even get a boost here, but um, the Fury Cutters aren't going to do more damage, so it's not real. I mean, it's going to do more damage, but it's super resistant, so it's not a big deal. All right, so they throw a Flame Charge there, and I'm going to throw right here. You see one... Uh, uh, incinerate goes through and then now we actually are going to CMP. So CMP is actually pretty solid for the most part. Obviously there's situations where you don't want to tie here on charge moves, but when you tie, especially when you have a lower term move to faster uh, for to a longer term move, um, you ensure that they can't possibly sneak because you're throwing you're spent you're both spending that same turn throwing, right? So in that situation they're less likely to get additional extra fast move that you don't really want them having. So in that situation, again, you see another fast move come through. And now here comes incinerate number eight, which if you recall, is the one where they get to their third flame charge. But look at the health difference on the town flame here. I end up only getting two nice slashes off because my timing is poor. And that gave this opposing town flame a lot of energy. So if you need a side by side comparison, this is what it looked like. Both screenshots are taken right before the opposing town flame had the flame charge ready. And the first picture is the one you saw from the first clip where I timed it much better and I was able to get off three night slashes. And that third one actually landed, which is why that town flame is in the red. If you see in the second picture, I have way less energy and I wasn't able to get a night slash off, right? So that's a big energy difference. Okay, so how do we optimize charge move timing here? Looking at this chart, there's a great graphic from Go Stadium here. If you look at the left side, it's your fast move, right? And then the top side, it says your opponent's fast move. In that situation, I was using Fury Cutter. So you want to look at the number first row, number one. And if you go all the way across to the top side, it's five, right? That's opponent's fast move. And so if you look how to read this chart is any of the numbers in gray is fast moves that you get off and it's the optimal timing. Any of the numbers in teal or light blue, that is suboptimal timing, but it's still not bad. So in this situation here, I want to throw four Fury Cutters and then I throw my charge move. Now the plus five in the parentheses essentially implies that after that first four fury cutters for all future times you throw a charge move you want to throw it at least five turns further incinerate is a five turn move so you are fully optimizing it because you're getting a full max four fury cutters the most amount possible and then you're throwing your one turn charge move if you don't have the energy to throw your charge move then you can't just go, well, I'm going to throw four Fury Cutters and then now I'm going to throw a Night Slash, right? You might not have the Night Slash ready. Once you take that into consideration, build up to the next one. Yeah, you didn't get the Night Slash at four, then throw the Night Slash at nine. Now, here's the main thing, and this is the beauty of the one turn moves. Maybe you don't have the luxury to build up to nine. Maybe your Glissor's about to get knocked out uh, or you just need to swap it out or something. You could still throw 
your nice slash at maybe turn eight, right? After eight fear cutters rather than nine. What does this mean? It just means that you got one less fast move off. You got one less fear cutter. Instead of the nine maximum fear cutters you could have gotten off in the time it took them to do two incinerates and then you throw your charge move, you only got eight. It's still fine. It's suboptimal, but still fine. And in some situations, you just need to throw sooner. Maybe you can only throw seven. You give them two free turns on the incinerate. Not the end of the world. Actually, it's less about giving them turns and it's about you not getting the optimal turns on your end. You're not getting the two extra fear cutters, but again, you might be knocked out. You just need to throw it. In this first matchup, um, the battle race started a little bit because I wanted to time it so that it was right after a uh, charge move with stone. So in this situation, that first one was actually kind of bad because you can see that the shadow call actually comes through. So what I want to do here instead is time it better. So in this one, you'll see that the shadow call actually doesn't really look like it comes through here. Um, and so this is something I noticed as well uh, when doing this video and also since the update is that whenever you throw your charge move, if you timed it absolutely perfectly and it's optimal, sometimes it'll look like their fast move isn't even coming through. It almost looks like what it used to look like when you denied a fast move. You don't see the animation of, in that specific example, the Shadow Claw from the Sableye. This doesn't mean that when you see it, the timing is not optimized. Something I noticed that sometimes you still see the animation, even if you optimize it perfectly, but it's just a nice indicator that you definitely did it right, to my knowledge, if you don't see it. I could be wrong, but that's something I noticed. Again, I'm just going off of when after I threw a charge move, so we know that we're completely reset on the same turn. And here you want to throw um, two, and then you throw a charge move, or five, and then charge move, etc. That again was a situation where they got a free bullet seed, right? So that was actually a bad example here, but I want to show that. And then now this is a good one coming now. You see right here, the bullet seed's still incoming right there, but you can see that it was thrown as I was getting my fast move on and it ends right when I throw my charge move, which is much better timing there, All right? And so that's the situation you want to be in. And then now, same thing against the Skarmory. You're able to, you see the end of the air slash animation come through while you're throwing the charge move. Now, four turn move with Gust, you want to optimize this. So again, it's easy with one turn moves because you just do one less than the total amount of turns they take. It's also easy to mess it up because if you try to fully optimize it as much as possible, it's easy to get greedy and also end up throwing just one turn too late and then you end up giving them a full, you know, in that situation, four turns on the gust. That at least is a personal struggle I, I find. Maybe other people find it easier. And against Talonflame, this is just a clip from earlier. Again, you'll see right here that there is no um, incinerate animation coming through. So a good indication that I optimized this, optimized this completely perfectly here. All right, next we're gonna take a look at two turn move versus three turn move here, right? So in this situation, uh, a easy way that uh, my friend Palmer's up says uh, to remember this is you do one, four, and seven. This is a very uh, common matchup. We have two turns versus three turns. So what you do is you throw on the one, right? Because it's one mud shot is two turns, and then um, one uh, throwing the charge move is one turn. The posting Pokemon throwing three turns, so that's perfect. Uh, but obviously, you might not have the energy to throw it right away, right? So here, that's one, and then so that's two turns, and then now throwing, that's three turns. So that equals the snarl that came through fully optimized. After that, you know, you can do four is easy, and then seven. Two turn into four turn. So this is an interesting one. And you'll see this is teal in the chart. There's no way to fully, fully optimize this. You will always end up giving up a turn here. Um, so you could throw one uh, charge, one fast move and then throw, throw the charge move. So that's, you know, two turns for the f uh, one fast move and one turn for the charge move. Or, you know, you could throw three, right? So if you throw three fast moves, that is a total of six turns, and then it takes you one turn to throw the charge move. So that's seven. But the thing is, if they're running four turn moves, that's two confusions. You're still giving up one turn. But that's the thing. Two turn into four turns, that's just how it is. It, you're always going to be suboptimal, but that is the time you should go off of. So here we have the two turn versus five turn. And so in this situation, I'm just throwing two much shots, and then I'm throwing, right? So two is the optimal, and then seven is the other optimal option. Seven is a lot of fast moves, right, that you have to throw. 
And so sometimes you don't get to that. So right here, you see I throw three, right? Three is not terrible, right? Because three is a total of six turns plus a turn to throw the charge move. So that is a total of seven turns. Downflame would throw two incinerates in that time. You end up giving three fast moves. Just play it smart, right? Obviously, optimize is good, but sometimes you don't have the luxury to. All right, three turn move now uh, with Umbreon. Pretty common three turn move Pokemon with Snarl, and you're going against a four turn move here. And so here, you want to throw at the one, and then you want to throw at the five. So in this situation, I'm throwing at the five because uh, I don't have energy for the one. Right, and then in this next clip here, I build up. So I'm just gonna reset it with a charge move, and I throw one, and then I get straight to the charge move. That's perfect. Three turns for the fast move, one turn for the charge move. That's four equals to the four of the confusion. So that's fully optimized. Now we have three turn move versus five turn move here. So in this situation, uh, if you throw three, that's fully optimized. Um, if you throw one, that's suboptimal, but still not bad, right? Because you get three turns for your fast move and then one turn for the charge move. So you're giving up just one free turn. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I give them one turn here, but as you can see from the animation of the incinerate, yeah, the incinerate comes through, but they're not getting any extra incinerate thing. They just get one extra turn. But again, you won't always have the opportunity to go most optimal. So that's a pretty solid uh, backup option. All right, and then finally we have the four turn move versus the five turn move here, right? And so this is again a situation where, yes, if you have the luxury to go for the six, right? Because especially if you first come into this matchup, you're not going to have the energy to throw a move with one turn and then throw, right? Confusion doesn't charge anything that quickly. But now that I charged up a lot of energy here, and that's on six, I throw one confusion. Now I have the move that's perfect, right? You get the four and then the one. Um, and so that's equal to exactly the five. But, you know, this is a very optimized situation that you might not always find yourself in. Uh, so just something to think about. So something you might be wondering at this point in the video is why didn't I show a three-term move on my end like a Snarl versus a two-term move Mud Shot? If you are the one with the longer turn duration, you have much less to lose in non-optimized timing. It is much harder for you to time your fast moves to your opponent's fast moves if they have shorter turn duration. You essentially have the leg up ready when a non-optimized charge move is thrown on either end. Because if you don't throw your charge move properly and they have a shorter turn duration, it's not the end of the world. They're not getting nearly as much value out of that as you would if they're throwing their charge move at a non-optimized timing for them. So a four-turn move versus a two-turn move here. Um, you see on the chart here, if you're using a four-turn move and you're going against a two-turn move, they don't even have any counts for that because they're just like, you're going to be desynced anyway. And it just really depends on how the two-turn move player plays it out. But there's no way you have an optimized timing here anyway. Um, so you just don't have to even worry about that. But if you look at the rest of the chart here, you'll, you'll see that the five-turn move against a two-turn move, you can throw on one and then... You can throw on three. Three incinerates is 15 turns. That is really hard to ad account for in terms of how long it's going to take for you to optimize everything. And honestly, like I said, if you had the longer term move, it's honestly just better to not worry about the, op the optimization as much. Of course, there are always situational times where that may be crucial for the outcome of the match. But I think the main thing, if you're not as used to the whole optimal charge move timing, is to just focus on when you have shorter turn duration. So that's why I didn't show uh, five turn versus anything, really, because five turn versus five turn is just a mirror. That's why I didn't show four turn versus two turn earlier, etc. The main thing here is you don't have to memorize this chart from Go Stadium. Obviously, it's a helpful tool and stuff like that. But it's really understanding the general concept is important. And sometimes you could just go off of the animation of your opponents if you get really used to the different animations for one turn, two turn, three turn, four turn, five turn, etc. And how to throw and when to throw by just looking at animation. I know some people don't actually do the specific number counting. They just look off of visual cues and that's fine too. I hope all this information is helpful for you. I know there's a lot of different math and counting involved in it. So it doesn't have to be the most precise at all times. 
I think the main thing to understand here is understanding how charge move timing can impact your gameplay and the results of your game and understanding when you are timing it correctly and when you may not be. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and share, subscribe for future content, hit that notification bell to get alerted right when I post a new video, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye. You are a drama queen.